when twilight falls on romance and love begins to die. Stop your crying, stop your sighing, get yourself another guy. I think I was born a dancer, but I've spent my entire life trying to become something else. <laughs> There's no point in studying a dancer. What's a dancer going to teach me? Music is going to teach me. That's my teacher, and I'm constantly learning from music. Even when I studied with Honey Calls at 17, I wasn't particularly fascinated. I liked what he was doing. I said, if I were going to tap dance, I would do that. But then tap dance died. He was a terrible teacher, which was perfect for me, because I'm a terrible student. And, and he would come in and show me something, and then he would leave, and then he would come back, and whatever he, I did, he said, that's fine. I was so struck by his phrasing. Even at 17, I heard it, and his, t his touch to the floor. I could tell where he was dancing in any room at any time, no matter how soft he was dancing by his pitch and his tone. It was fascinating. When we got back together again, when I was in my 30s, I had gone pretty far out into free, into the uh, avant-garde and, and free jazz, and I mean, I was gone. So going back, to him and his thought, his way of thinking was a big deal for me because what it did was it took me back to my early, to my childhood and to my parents because he was a performer. He was a show business guy. He loved his audience. My mother loved her audience. I didn't love my audience. I love my art in Take It or Leave It. So when I did the documentary in Great Feats of Feet and I had the copacetics and my teacher, Honey Coles, come to New Pulse and I was with them for a week. And then I found out what I didn't know because we danced all week. It was insane. We were together all day and all night, and I realized that I wasn't as good as I thought I was. He would always introduce me as the best female tap dancer. So one day I said to him, you know, that's like saying I'm the best tap dancer on Thompson Street. There aren't any other female tap dancers. He said, you mean to tell me you think you can dance as well as a man? I said, oh, you mean to tell me I can't? He says, no woman will ever dance as well as a man. So I said, okay. Everywhere we go, because we're going on tour, I'm going to tell everybody that we meet that you said that. And Eddie Brown was there, great tap dancer from California. So I said, Eddie, you know what Honey Cole said? <laughs> He said, a woman that never dances as well as a man. What do you think of that? He said, well, of course they can't, sugar. Well, by this time, Honey Coles was, had about had it with me. Because <laughs> the whole night was just going to pot. So to get back to, to get back to, on me, he said, Everything you do is me. One day he said, you know, it wasn't easy for me in my community. Because they would say, you know, the, the, the black community, why do, you, why do you work with her? Why do you 
give her your material. And he said, I told them because she wants it. Nobody else does, and she can do it, and nobody else can. Just, just the black-white issue by itself, he was a very handsome man. He would have been, he was perfectly aware he would have been a leading man if he had been white. He knew how talented he was. And he was bitter, and he was bitter when, when Tap died, and then he went to work at the Apollo, and the Apollo died. So that, like he said himself, he just went to the bar. I feel like we definitely mentored each other. So it was this incredible tension of ideas and time, because you were a lot older than me, and a way of sharing perspectives of different periods, and the way of bringing them together. So forget about your heartache. Just forget the cry. Stop your reminiscing. You should be out kissing with yourself another guy. And then he'd always say at the end, and I'm available. <laughs>